What's going on, everybody? Today's episode, you know her on Instagram with some of the latest and greatest cigar reels. She's big into transitions. You know her as Rojo Corojo, coming up next on The Burn. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Burn Down. Today's guest, you all know her on Instagram. She has some of the sickest reels out there, some of the best transitions I've ever seen. That's no other than Hannah, a.k.a. Rojo Corojo. What's going on? What's up, guys? Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for joining uh, the show. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule, out of making those transitions and those insane reels. With all the smoke transitions and I love it. Appreciate you taking the time to sit with us here on the I burnout. do what I can. It's it's not much, but I, I do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I respect someone's, someone's it. Got to. I respect it because uh, I feel like you put as much effort into the reels as we do, and I don't really see that with too many other people. So you know, that's why we wanted to have you on here. We gotta we gotta go yeah, back right? and forth. The trials and tribulations of Instagram. Game recognizes game. You know what I'm saying? That's true. That is true. So before we get into the the conversation here, what kind of cigar do we have? I'm hoping. I'm thinking what you have. I have none other than the blueprint. Let's let's Give go. It up. Give it up. Let's go. Represent, That's my girl. You know, doing my part. That's sick. <laughs> so we're all smoking the blueprints. So Obviously. for those of you that have been living under a rock for the last month and a half, uh, the blueprint is our cigar. We just released it. You can head over to the website, burnoutpodcast.com, to get yourself um, the blueprint. So we are going to be smoking this, Bang and man. we're actually drinking... Uh, some semi cab salve that we had, well, that I had left over from last night. <laughs> we opened up what? the bottle and drank maybe a half a glass, and then are you drinking anything? Do you anything to drink? Uh, I saw the look. Drinking La Croix. La Croix. Right La Croix. Right La Croix. La Croix. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a lot of different ways how people can say those that name. So. I just know it from uh, Wolf of Wall Street, where the guy says it's not La Croix, it's La Croix. <laughs> they say it in Wolf of Wall Street. He says something in Wolf of Wall Street. Anyway, I anyways, I don't know how to say it. I say Lacroix, 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 whatever you want. I say to call. Lacroix. I feel like there's only a lot of like variation in how people said it. Like right when it came out, I feel like people know. <laughs> I, I hope they. Know. Do we know the proper way to say it, or just the way that we say it? No, just the way we say it. That's the only thing that matters. What is it? C R O I X or C R? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Confirm. So as we get our cigars lit up, let's start with the first question here. You know, who is Hannah? Who is Rojo Corojo? Let's hear her story. Where is she from? How'd you start Instagram? Let's get a little biography on you. Yeah. Uh, so I currently live in Idaho, Boise area, but I was born and raised in Portland, Oregon. We moved here probably about a little over a year ago. Um, my husband, Jeff, which you guys are... I think are familiar. Cigar he rapper. Is cigar rapper. Yeah. He is the GM of a uh, cigar bar here in Idaho. And so that's kind of what brought us to the Idaho area. But Portland was just kind of getting a little bit out of hand. <laughs> so <laughs> you know we should probably skedaddle out of here. A lot of creepy things yeah, going there was on some, around uh, here. There were some yeah. pretty interesting uh, decisions that were made over in Portland, Oregon that were... Uh, probably led to a lot of people fleeing. Yeah. <laughs> so was it hard moving from your home state? Um, I mean, there are things that were hard and things that were easy. You know, I, it's difficult being away from friends and family and just home, you yeah, know, just sure. somewhere you're familiar with. Um, I do love living here though. Like it's, it's kind of just the change we needed. So. How so really what made you, what made you pick Boise, Idaho, out of all of the places to move to? Yeah, so Jeff had actually lived here six years, four six years previously, and loved it. Um, and then the vault was looking for a GM, and so they kind of were able to get connected, and they offered him a job. And so I was like, okay, well, this is kind of where we're gonna go. I mean, it it was. Somewhere that was outside of Portland. Was it too far away? I mean, like, it's only an hour flight, six hour drive. Like, hmm. so. Yeah, it's not like you're going from like New York, California. 
you know, so it was just a good, everything kind of fell into place very effortlessly for us here. And so we were just like, you know, I think this is, this is where we need to be. Beautiful. And, and how's a cigar scene in Idaho? How's, how's that look like? Big cigar scene. Yeah. I mean, Idaho is fairly conservative. And so there's a lot of cigar smokers here. Um, and it's, it's growing. I mean, obviously Idaho and the Boise area is growing a ton. So they have the vault in Meridian and they're opening their second location, um, in a neighboring town. So things are, things are moving up. We're doing big things, making moves. Boise, Idaho was really beautiful. I remember I never been there, but I, I had some friends that, uh, I went to college with that played football in Boise and then they transferred to college over by me in Long Island. But you know, they were known from being Boise, Idaho. I remember one of my buddies going there and he had some crazy pictures of like all the different spots they would go to, like all the different mountain ranges and all the little nature stuff. And I'm like, man, it's Midwest country, man. It's yeah. Like, it's country uh, out there, man. I'm like, Boise, Idaho doesn't look so bad from like a nature perspective. I don't, like, I never heard of really anything from Boise or anything in, in Idaho besides yeah. potatoes. Potatoes. <laughs> I was say, more than just potatoes. I, I mean, it's tough because, I mean, I, I come from Oregon and so Oregon is gorgeous too um it's just a little bit different i would say like it's just a little bit more bigger sky here than it is in portland like yeah. right in the valley but yeah it is beautiful and i even jeff and i are still exploring different parts of the state so now did jeff get you into cigars since he had a previous cigar like occupation or how did that whole thing transpire? no he didn't so <laughs> that is something people ask it's like oh i bet you're only in stars because your husband was i knew you were waiting for that question well i, I mean it's it. a valid question right i mean the you don't see too many couples that are seriously both seriously into cigars you usually have one that that more so is the lover and the other one kind of occasionally yeah. dabbles but the both you guys are completely we're, we're in neck deep yeah. yeah i i will say i think the fact that jeff is so involved in the cigar uh industry i don't know i don't know if i would be this deep into the cigar industry if we were not married but um i fell in love with cigars before we were ever a thing so and what is it that you that like is, about cigars? Yeah, what is it, what's, it, what's the attraction there? I I love that cigars give everybody an opportunity to just slow down and just <laughs> enjoy, you know. And That's whether what it's Matthew like, McConaughey said, right? It gives them a chance yeah, to slow like, the clock down. Yeah, you know, I think people are so just go 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 all the time and don't just yeah sit down and slow down and enjoy the moment and just be able to enjoy something. Um, and being able to do that for, with people from all walks of life, you know, I think cigars kind of bring very unlikely people together. And I really, really enjoy that. Absolutely. I mean, well, that's, that's exactly what we're all about here on the burnout podcast. I mean, no doubt. we preach it all the time is you bring people from all walks of life. I mean, think about it, right? You're over, you're in from Oregon living in Idaho and we're in New York so yep. you're from Oregon, we're from New York, complete opposite sides of the country, and we're getting together on our podcast because of one thing, that we enjoy cigars, right? Like, we wouldn't have found you if you didn't like cigars, you wouldn't have found us if we didn't like cigars, so yep. it brings people together from all different walks of life. That's Especially the, especially the blueprint cigar. I mean, you know, <laughs> quick plug, quick plug. Speaking of good cigars. <laughs> That's, no, but it's for sure. I mean, I always say, like, I say it all the time, but... You know, you, you said it yourself, all different walks of life. And I always say presidential debates should be held in a cigar lounge because you don't really see the drama and tension in cigar lounge. So uh, part of me is like, don't ever bring politics into cigar lounge. But I'm like, you know what? It also may be interesting to see this guy and this guy. And they just kind of sit in a cigar and they just go back and forth without any like mumbo jumbo. You might be a little more relaxed. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, that's always my philosophy. Yeah. So let's so let's um, let's go into Rojo Corojo, your Instagram, right? Rojo Corojo. Rojo Corojo. So for people that you know might have guessed it already, the reason why she's called Rojo Corojo, um, I'm assuming is the red hair Corojo. Yeah, it's a play, play on play words. On red hair, yeah. So is Corojo your favorite, or just because it rhymes with Rojo? So I. 
I would say it's a definite. Yeah, I would confidently say it's a favorite. I the thing is, is how kind of Rojo Corojo kind of was born was. Um, let's see, because I started I started my account in I think September, so it hasn't quite been a year. Oh wow, it's that you know it's you're that new. So it's that's yeah really. Oh, I, I, hold on, let me, yeah, let, me yeah. let me let me take a look here. Oh. Let me take a look that's here. That's crazy. That, I so, didn't realize yeah. uh, I didn't realize it was that new. Yo, you started in September and. I think you and you're what? already 20. She's over 26K already. You know what? It took me three years to hit 20,000. It only <laughs> took you nine months. I'm so jealous. <laughs> so you're killing it. You yeah. are killing it. And, yeah. and almost, have, almost, so it's about I mean, a year, almost a year. Yeah. Instagram definitely has its ups and downs. And I think even in that short time, the account has like changed a lot, you know, because Instagram has changed. Social media has changed. Um, so when I first started, I was basically primarily only doing static photos. Um, and I was really hesitant to get into the reels game. I was really hesitant. Was oh, like, we feel you, girl. We feel like, you. It takes so much more creative energy. <laughs> you're so much more exposed. You know, you're like, yeah, you're just putting more of yourself out there, which is kind of terrifying and um I mean, there's trolls, obviously, too. So you just kind of have to deal with that as they come. But, but um, yeah, it's been it's been quite a r- wild ride. But basically how it kind of came to be is my husband and I were sitting on our back porch smoking a cigar. And somehow and he had an Instagram account that he has had for a few years. And somehow I got through this rabbit hole through his account and all the different cigar accounts. And I kind of stumbled upon a few female accounts and I look at him and I'm like, I could do this, you know? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, if you want to, you know? And I was like, okay. And so the next day I was like kind of brainstorming different names of like what my handle would be. And, uh, I just started like writing down all these different options and, Rojo Corojo seemed the obvious winner. So it's a very clever name. I it mean, is. It's it's a great name. I really give you a lot of Thank kudos you. for this because <laughs> you know it's not easy to find a good name that sticks and sticks out. And I remember, I honestly think I remember starting to follow you, and I was like Rojo Corojo. That's like that's a really clever name. I said, yeah, sure, I'll follow her. It's clever. I don't really like to follow too many people, but <laughs> and it's e- it's easy to remember too because you get a lot of names out there that have you know, such and such dot this underscore slash. And it's just, yeah. it's very difficult to, to remember. Like when we were coming up with names, I remember I re- I had uh dapper dot cigar or something like that. Right. And I had, um, and you had, no, you were dapper cigar. Then you dapper, dapper cigars came out and you said, before they even get in, get start busting my chops, let me make it to the dapper. And cigar. I was, yeah. And I remember having a dot in there. Maybe and I removed it. And then we were just come up with, I said, it's gotta be something clean. I don't want any dots in there. Yeah. I don't want nothing. It's gotta be something clean yep. uh, that you can remember. Right. And if somebody searches it, because if you don't have the dot in there, you're kind of screwed. Right. So for us, right. for you, even though you have an underscore at the end, if you type in brother cigar, you pop up immediately. So when you have Rojo Corojo, very easy to remember. There's no dots. There's no spaces. No underscores. It's just yeah. as soon as you type in Rojo, it's gonna come up. Now, and where do you get yeah. the where do you get the creativity from for making those videos? Because it's you know people see the end result, but like yeah, it's, it's a, a lot to go into it. Talk us through the process of what it yes. goes from beginning, from idea to, to filming to posting. Oh, uh, it. I think people kind of underestimate how much time and creative energy does go into content i mean whatever kind of content it is especially if um you want to make good content you know i think like even the voiceovers like i don't just do that once or twice like if i'm gonna do it like i'm gonna do like 50 takes 100 sure percent it's on point because you, know? you gotta have the sync perfect right there's no even if he's yeah, a little breath to- or a cough or a stutter you gotta have it perfect yeah. i mean does it irk you when right. you see people and they're like Hey, yeah, how you doing? It drives us yeah, yeah, yeah. nuts. Like, Why are you posting I just, that? I, I can appreciate people who put a lot of, I don't know, time and pride into their content and want to make good content. Because anybody can make content. You know, anybody can put anything out there. But um, it takes effort and creative energy to create good content. And so 
I, I think when I kind of made that transition to doing reels, I was like, okay, I want to try to make content that nobody else in the cigar niche is making. Um, and there really wasn't a lot of like transitions, you know, and honestly, that was the content that I was most interested in making. I'm like, this is what's something that is also going to give me joy because these are fun to create. Um, and it's kind of like, I don't know, you're just kind of always chasing that, that next satisfactory <laughs> reel. I mean, Instagram doesn't always like what your favorite reels are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, believe me, we know. Sometimes it's for you. Yeah. The ones know, that you spend hours, or I want to say hours because, you know, it's an it's a over exaggeration, but the ones that you spend, you know, a half hour, 20 minutes, a half hour of, no, can, of straight, like, take something up to well, I would hour. say, I would say, okay, you spend hours because if you're filming it and then you're writing the caption and you're creating the thumbnail, oh, yeah. so you spend a lot of time, you're adding in, especially if you have a lot of words, yeah. you're adding in all these things. So you spend an hour, two hour, three hours on one yeah. reel and you go, oh, this is fire. And then you drop it and you get maybe what? 5,000 views. And you're like, what the well, fuck? Well, still man? a lot. But. I mean, but it's okay. It's, it's, it's. You want that K next to it. You want that K yeah. next to but it. But it's, it's, um, respect. It's, uh, what do they call it? Um, respectable? No, it's, uh, what's the word? Like, honest? Or something? Yeah. No, I can't, um, think what, of the word. But it's, it's. What's, what are you trying to say here? What where it's mean? not like, um, it's the same. Okay. If you get 5,000 views, but you have 100,000 followers, right? Versus, that may be a lot to oh, some people. Oh, your engagement. Yeah, your, your engagement. engagement. That may be a lot yeah. to someone who has a thousand followers and five thousand views. Yeah, I can't think of the word. It's beside me right now. But you're right. So we say, okay, five thousand is not enough. But you, you know, the account's got twenty, thirty, forty thousand followers. Whereas somebody who's got a thousand followers, they get five thousand views. That's yeah. a lot. So it's all in. Um, it's, it's all relative. Respect. Relative. Yeah. Thank you. It's, it's all relative. relative. Yeah. I got you, you son. I Thank got you. you. <laughs> So it's relative, right? So when you spend all the yeah. time working on these things and you don't get as many views as you want or you think, right. it's kind of disheartening. But then you'll spend 10 seconds or 30 seconds on a view, on a reel that you don't have to say anything. You just post it out. It's a funny sound. Bang. It goes viral. You're like, what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> yeah. I remember talking I remember talking to you a few weeks ago and you're like, hey, are you seeing like some changes and like demonetization or like less views? And I'm like – I'm like, yeah, like it happens all the time. Like there's months where Instagram loves me. Like, sure, we'll pay you for your videos. No problem. And then there's some like, nah, not this month. We're gonna, you're not even going to get this many views. We're not even going to put it out there. And I'm like, yeah, so have yeah. you gotten have you gotten the bonus, uh, the reels bonus yet? Yes. So I did. Um, I've actually recently, I've just decided to not monetize on my videos because like to me, I would really only – be making a, a substantial amount of money if I was getting millions of views yeah. per month. Yeah, you so get a couple because, hundred bucks maybe. Right, yeah. And so like right now it's kind of like, so you have the community guidelines and then you have the monetization guidelines. And so like, like Instagram already doesn't really like tobacco very much. And so the monetization guidelines are so much more sensitive than the community guidelines. So I just feel like a bunch of my videos are getting flagged. And once it gets flagged, Instagram does not push that video. So like the video would do awful after it would mm -hmm. get flagged. And you honestly, you can't even anticipate if they're going to flag you or not. And I'm like, you know what? Like, I would rather just not make the dollar that I would make on that video yeah. and have it do well and grow my brand and try to grow my page by it, by the video doing well, as opposed to like taking that risk and giving the dollar and yeah. then giving. And it's, flag. And it's ass backwards too, because you don't monetize and then the video goes viral and you're like, son of a bitch, I could have monetized. But then you do monetize it and that same video doesn't go viral because they flag you and they go, but if you didn't flag me over here, then why are you flagging me over there? It's the same video. Yeah. I didn't change anything. I just yeah. clicked a button right. to say monetize. You can't – you literally cannot anticipate what they're going to flag, like what kind of violations you're going to get, which is just so frustrating. And um, and you can't appeal it either. Like even – No. It doesn't it's go anywhere. It goes into a black hole. Not. Yeah. It's, and a, I'm it's like, stupid. I just – and I'm like, I just spent all this time and energy into this reel and now like, you know, it gets shat on and – that's it. <laughs> yeah, we kind of stopped doing the same thing too because we would run into that. And again, you know, I think the most I ever made was 
maybe like 300 bucks when I had a really good month. But yeah. again, if you're not making, yeah. if you're not doing, uh, and, and even so that's okay, you have to get in this month a million views total and we're only going to pay you 1200 bucks. And I go, okay, so if one of your things goes viral, you might get a million. But then the next month, let's say you get it, they bump it up and they say, you got to go 4 million and you'll get the same amount. I go, that doesn't make any sense. No. Like, yeah. It should be the number of views. So we just kind of we both said, yeah, the fuck it. We're not gonna. I'm just gonna. Po- I'm just gonna yeah. put shit out. Just post it. And if it goes viral, it goes right. viral. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Right. I like doing it. People people like seeing it. So, yeah, what what do you think you find the most engagement with? Like what type of videos that you think most people are intrigued on watching you? You know, I think probably the videos of mine that do the best are the lip syncing ones. Uh, those aren't my favorite, <laughs> like reels to make, but. I think because they do well, I continue to make them, um, which is kind of just the beast of Instagram sometimes. Is I mean, you have to kind of mix in content that gives you joy, and then you also kind of have to, like, feed the beast a little bit. Yeah, of <laughs> course. I mean, it's like yeah, give and take. Kind of- yeah, yeah, I mean, it's all, about, it's all about relatability. Huh? I mean, mm-hmm. I, the mm-hmm. real reason – listen, if I didn't have a – we didn't have a podcast and we didn't, you know, have our own cigar and stuff. One, I don't think I'd be on Instagram. If I did have Instagram, I would not be on it as much as I am. Oh no, and it wouldn't. I wouldn't be posting. Oh, yeah. I put it this way: I would not be posting. I would just yeah. be kind of like maybe scrolling yeah. or whatever, like looking. That's how you get watch some of the highlights on. Sports that's why Center I, and stuff, I like but. making re- people like relatable stuff because I like when people are like, "Oh yeah, man, this is me," or you know, it's like it's the best when people can relate yeah. to what you're trying to put out. So that's I think the stuff that does does best is the stuff that people can relate to. And then you have the some yeah. of the funny stuff and some of the the yeah. cool swab stuff where you're kind of just like smoking a cigar. Are drinking you know. it's really it's really like you said sprinkle kind of so i wonder if you i want to ask if you do the same thing so what we typically do when we're going through making reels is we go onto the reel page and we're scrolling through and we try to find stuff that one first off is viral or is is, is trending is trending right you can see the little arrow in the bottom left yeah so i want to make sure the audio is trending and then two if we can we say okay it's trending is there anything we can really do with this some of them you can't really do much with it. Some of yeah. them you can. So what happens is sometimes the audio, it's a trending audio, but there's really no lip sync. It's just kind of a, a song. So you're like, all right, we might just do this swab, blow the smoke out, put the song behind it, and you're done. Some of them you have lip sync and you have to really do it. But do you kind of find the process very similar? Do you do the same thing? You got to look for trending audios? For sure. I mean, I think any content creator is going to scroll through you know, the reels or like the reels tab to get inspo, you know, I think everybody does that. And I think especially for the trending audio, it's like, okay, like if I see an audio that's trending, I'm like, can I relate this to my niche? If I can, then I'll save it. And I'll have this like mental audio bank to like think of ideas and stuff. But yeah, I think it's kind of similar for everybody that's in that boat. You kind of have to like scroll through and be like, can I, is this usable for me or or no. So some of the long ones, do you write? Do you write like a script for? Like you'll like write it on a piece of paper and post it because I've definitely have done that plenty of times where it's like a long reel. I'm like, Justin has the brain capacity to like watch the reel once and like memorize it. Where me, I'm like, all right, I do it like thirty times. And I'm like, not can't. Oh, let's just write it on a piece of paper. I'll, I'll actually, I'll have the thing filmed and like, for instance, if this is the paper, I'll have the paper like here and I'll be <laughs> filming it like this so that he can read the paper while basically looking at the camera, or I'll put it like right below the camera. Yeah. But I mean, you got to do what you got to do, right? It's do hard. It, really, do uh, it for the gram. Whatever works. Whatever works. I I just I just memorize it. I've never written it down. I think like for me, the process takes long anyway. So I'm just like, so yeah, I just usually memorize it. Yeah. If you listen to it over and over and over and over again, yeah. or like what Marshawn Lynch says, and over and, and over, over and over, and over. Yeah. <laughs> it, it kind of sticks. But to get the little, you know, idiosyncrasies, the little like coughs or the yeah. breaths, that <laughs> takes some, it's I also not think a first we, try. I'll tell I also you that. think we have limit, yeah, like we have no. limited time together. So it's like I'm trying to maximize our time. So I don't want to memorize a, a right. one minute reel with a whole script. I'm like, let me just write it down and just root off of it. It take me 30 seconds. But anyways, yeah. so that's that's the secret. So let me ask you this. Okay, so we've been talking about Rojo Rojo, the Instagram page you have, based yeah. off of cigars. So let's let's go back. How did you get into cigars? Do you remember your first cigar? Do you remember you know? 
talk about that. Take us before the page, before anything. Yeah. How did you get into cigars? You said you were into cigars before you met your husband. The real passion. Yes. So what happened there? Yes. Yeah, so um, we had some really close family friends that were big, big cigar smokers. And I actually ended up like living with them for a time after I graduated from college. And uh, I, I kind of just got to the point where I was curious enough to want to try some of the cigars. And kind of after that, it was just kind of like it was a slow progression. But like once I really got into it, I was into it, you know, and I don't remember the first cigar that I tried per se. Um, but the first cigar that I purchased like at a cigar shop was the my father, Flor de Las Matias. Let's wow. go. Okay. Let's go. That's a, that's a Justin that classic. Is, that is a Justin go-to. That's a staple in my yes. humidor. Yes. So that that was definitely, like, I specifically remember that that was the first, like, big girl cigar I, like, I purchased on my own. Like, no first one. Big girl like, cigar. It, no one, like, gave it to me. It wasn't, like, a flavored cigar. I mean, you know. No, no. Uh, no, you can no say it. You can say like it. Flavored cigars, but. You can say it. Flavored cigars yeah. are not. <laughs> they don't fall in our mouth. No, they're not my thing. They're yeah. not my thing. Don't worry. You don't have to. Don't there, there's a, there's a time and place for flavored cigars. And Eric brings up a point about this is that flavored cigars are great for people that are. It's like an entry point into the cigar world where, you know, you can try yeah. it and you're pretty much going to like it because it's just sugar or it's just flavored. And then you can right. branch exactly. out and get into the other ones. But we're not. It's a gateway cigar. Yes. I, I was just going to say it's a gateway cigar. Just like yeah. when. Just like when you want to do some cocaine, you do some weed first to get you in that gateway drug. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Listen, she moved yeah. out of Portland, Oregon for a reason, okay? <laughs> <We're not talking. laughs> gateway drugs yeah. is some heroin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, gateway cigar is, I, is the right way to, to take it because people are like, should I, should I be embarrassed that I smoke flavored cigars? And I'm like, no, you like what you like. like Listen, why are you embarrassed? Smoke whatever you want to smoke. Okay, don't let anybody tell you. Don't let us tell you. Don't let Rojo Corojo tell you. You smoke whatever the hell your heart desires, okay? Absolutely. That's so, what cigars are all about. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's how we come together. So, now, what are some of your? I know this is a, an age old question everyone asks. Everyone asks us this. I don't really have an answer. But what are some of your favorite cigars that you do like to smoke? That you particularly Bes- look out besides the blueprint. Besides the blueprint. <laughs> yeah, besides the blueprint. You know, because it's not readily available for me everywhere. <laughs> yet, um, yet, yet. I, you know, I, I think. Can you get them? I'm, can you get them in in Idaho? We ship them to Idaho, don't we? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Why okay. Not? Well, I know there's yeah. some states that don't allow. No, I, think that's, I think that's I think that's Utah. They don't allow oh, outside. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, alcohol yeah. and tobacco. So you can get them online, but they're not available in your local shop. Right. Like, yeah. I mean, we obviously don't carry them in our brick and mortar, but um, I'm very. I, I mean, I I do like bigger brands, but I also I mean, there's a lot of really good cigars out there, and. Um, I really love finding boutique brands and I mean, cause a lot of the brands that we have, even in our humidor, we have a lot of boutique brands that have phenomenal blends. And so it really just kind of depends. Like, you know, I really love like the foundation tabernacle Havana seed. I love the CG four from Lugione. Um, I love the white series from Cavalier um yeah and there's a ton from like cle and aroa that i really love the yeah. roa classic is probably one of my favorite go-to cigars it's my i, I say it's my favorite anytime cigar there you because go people, people always ask me that they're like what's your favorite cigar and i'm like well it depends what time of day it is and how many like what cigar in the possession it is and what mood i'm in and it's a very loaded what question I'm in. i mean it's such a tough question to answer too because everybody says what's your favorite cigar all time and i go dude that's like asking what's your favorite kid or like it's such a such a difficult question to answer because there's so many variables right well when Am you have, your, when you have your, your own cigar it's easy to say here this is my favorite cigar <laughs> yeah, but it's funny they too because they always they always, they, always, bit, yeah. they always ask what's the best what's the best cigar you've ever had. And I'm like, listen, it, it's I, or they say what's the, what can you recommend best cigar? And I go, listen, I'm not naive enough, or, or I'm not I'm not going to say Blueprint's the best cigar you're ever going to have in your life because it's it's subjective. It's it may we love it right, but you may not it like very, it. I will. It is very good. I will. I will give you that. Well, well thank you good. very much. We spent two years making it, so thank you. it better be good. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you. But you know, some people don't like Padrones. Because they're too peppery. Does mm-hmm. that mean that Padron's a bad cigar? 
No, not at all, right? Some people don't like Cabernet because they just they don't like red wine. Does that mean red wine? All red wine's bad? No, it just doesn't fit you. So yeah. it's very hard to say when people ask, "What's the best cigar that you've ever or that you recommend?" They go, "Well, shit, right. is it morning? Is it night? Are you drinking coffee? Are you drinking beer? Are you drinking wine? Are you drinking, like it's so hard." So, yeah. but those yeah. are some good good brands because we've actually not heard. Many of those brands when we ask that question. No, for sure. I mean, I like Aroa. I, like I think Roa is really good. I don't smoke enough of them, but I like them a lot. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's a fun fact about um, Aroa cigars. So there's a fun fact about Ron. Every label, they have the words uh, Salud Amor Pesetas, which was Christian Aroa's Cheers, which is um, health, love, and money. And that was his like toast to a good life, health, love, and money. And they put it on on every wrap on every label, uh, but that's a great one. Uh, CLE or the yeah. uh, the first twenty, yeah, great mm-hmm. cigar. And you were recently. Oh, yeah. you, how was the PCA? Uh, not the P, was the PCA you went to? Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. The PCA in Las Vegas because you know we had a lot of people asking us if we were going. We always obviously wanted to go, but it looked like a great time. So, how was your experience? Was that your first time going there? It was. It was my first time going. It was. It's honestly, it was a blast. It was fun to go because I'm a tobacconist. I work in the brick and mortar that my husband is GM at. Um, so I went with our retailer and it was fun. Uh, honestly, even just to see from the retailer side, the hustle and all the meetings and how kind of all of that goes down and how, how much time and energy goes into curating a humidor in a brick and mortar. Um, it was there was how long does how long does it take to curate a humidor in a in a lounge? I, well, I have I, no I idea. That's really why I'm asking. Depends. I never actually yeah, I, I actually thought really, about that. Yeah, I think I mean, I think some people kind of have it down to an art where they already have like really good relationships with a lot of the reps, um, or they have a really robust palate where they've smoked through a lot of different brands and you know know how to find good shit, but. <laughs> Um, so I think it really depends on who you are. I think some people it's easier and some people it's a little bit harder, but it also depends on how big your humidor is in that lounge, right? Right. Like, do you have a hundred boxes or a thousand boxes? Right. <laughs> it's a lot right. easier to curate a hundred. Right. And who's your clientele, you know? Right. Like, do you have, do you have the cigar nerds or do you have more of the, you know, more or is your lounge in a more affluent area? I mean, there's so many factors that go into it. Um, like, what is your clientele going to appreciate? What is your clientele going to purchase? Yeah. Do you what, have a lot of guys that are spot? just coming in off, you know, after work, they just want a quick cigar. They're not really going to go into the the boutique brands or they're not going to go into some of the higher end cigars. Like, for instance, if you're in a market where let's just call it, you know, the average income is $50,000 a year, you probably yeah. don't want to have Davidoff's or Opus X's or Padron's because nobody's going to buy right. them. Right. Those right. are 25, 30, especially here in New York, they're, you know, Davidoff's are a hundred dollars. Some of them, nobody's going to buy that because they're, yeah. they're not making enough money to buy it. But if you're in an area where there's average medians, 150, okay, maybe you go for the higher end stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was really fun to see at PCA, just kind of even just see other, so many other shops that are there kind of doing their thing and doing the hustle. But, there was there was a uh, an interesting situation where um, we were in a meeting at the Karen Berger booth, and I guess last year or in years previous, they had there's been a lot of uproar about uh, influencers getting into PCA on like a media pass. <laughs> Good thing we didn't which go. <laughs> I, yeah, which which like. I wasn't there as an influencer. Like I'm a tobacconist. I, I work for a retailer. I was there with a retailer, but somebody like paparazzi me in this at the Karen Berger booth and sent the pictures to the president of PCA and was like, what is she doing here? She's an influencer, like blah, blah, blah. And he's like, whoa, dude, like she, she, she works for a retailer, like cool your jets, you know? But it was just, I was like, out of everybody, like, there was a lot of people that were on Instagram that were there. It of wasn't course. just me. They did. Like, so so okay. that actually answers one of my questions. So I was going to ask, one, did you get recognized while you were there? And two, people actually do that. They're going to take a picture of you and send it to the president and be like, she, she, she doesn't belong here? Like, 
Yeah. You're a huge know. cigar was, smoker. Like, what do you mean you don't belong poor there? Poor form. It was poor form, I thought. Was like, okay. <laughs> what was that? Bad form. Bad talk. That's Captain Hook. <laughs> oh. Bad form. That's so odd. Oh, one I can't, second. I'm just I mean, get my charger. That's so uh, – I would never think of that, like someone snitching on you about you being there. Yeah. Yeah. So it, we just kind of laughed about it because also the president of PCA is like really good friends with the owner of our of the vault, the brick and mortar that we work at. Um, so we kind of all just chuckled about it. But um, I did get recognized, too, by different various people I was there, which was wild. It it's, it's a yeah, weird it feeling. Kind of it's a, a weird feeling. Experience. Yeah, it was weird to people to recognize me or to like ask to take a picture with me or something, which didn't happen all that often. But it was it was fun to like meet a bunch of people that I'd only seen or corresponded with online. Yeah, so it's was, it's a weird feeling, weird but fun. but let's be honest, it's kind of cool, isn't it? It's it's a little cool. It's <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> we actually oh, I'll lie to you. I'll there was lie to you. um I just went I went to uh Texas recently to visit my fiance's family and one of her friends was trying to buy cigars for us uh, or for me for as like an engagement. I mean we've been engaged for almost a year now, but we hadn't seen them cuz they're in Texas whatever. So we're going to give us a little engagement gift. So they went to a cigar lounge in a small town in Texas, San Marcos, San Marcos, Texas. And they went to the lounge and she asked, she's like, hey, can you send me uh, your Instagram and just show them to the guy and be like, hey, look, he, this is what he smokes. So she showed the Insta, or he showed the Instagram to this guy in San Marcos. And the guy in San Marcos that was part of the lounge, he goes, yo, I know those guys. I watch their podcasts. I love those guys, blah, blah, blah. So my fiance told me this. I'm like, really? Like, it's kind of like who are we? we're just guys that post stuff yeah. on Instagram. And he goes, yo, I love these guys. I'm yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's weird. But it's kind of cool. Like it, yeah, it's, it's kind of, I mean, just because, I mean, the cigar industry and community is really big, but it's also really small. So you're, you're kind of like a micro yeah, celebrity. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, there was, there's a, there a few ins- I mean, I was even in Tennessee and that happened there. I was in a cigar lounge and the guy who worked there, I brought a couple of Blueprint cigars to say, hey, you know, just, you know, hand these to the, the owner and you can, yourself can smoke one. And he's like, all right. And he's looking, he's like, this looks familiar. And then I started showing him on Instagram, like a little promo video that we did. And then somehow he went to uh, my Instagram and he was already following me. And he was like, I knew I recognized that cigar. And I'm like, this is so bizarre. Like I'm in the middle of Tennessee. The guy yeah. who works in the cigar lounge already follows me. It's so weird. It's, it's a, weird. It's weird, but it's it's cool. It's it's a cool feeling for sure. It's cool. It's cool and it's, it's kind of humbling in a way too. I don't 100%. know. I mean, because I'm just yeah. a normal – person like anybody else just having a little side hustle yeah exactly like what do we do grind, we, we you know? smoke cigars so. and post shit online like right you know it's not like we're in in the next movie that's on netflix we just right. post shit on instagram and people yeah. recognize you it's humbling for me it's kind of cool now do you do you and your husband like fight over or like you know i'm smoking that cigar tonight no no i'm smoking that cigar or you guys have your own separate stash we have our own separate stash now good um, now is your is your like uh, profile and palette different than his? Or do you guys typically um, smoke the same stuff? We we do. I mean, we typically like a lot of the same stuff. Um, he has a very advanced palette. Like he just, I mean, he he works in a lounge. Like he, that's what he does. He just smokes cigars all day. So he smokes more than me. Um, I would say my stash is probably bigger than his is now, but I also don't smoke <laughs> mine's bigger than yours. <laughs> <laughs> so, but he has so the whole yeah, lounge I, technically is his stash, right? I mean, right, right. He has, he has a lot of cigars at his fingertips, but I mean, we typically do smoke together every night. It's kind oh, of every fun. nice. Mm-hmm. Wow, every almost every night. Every night, yep. Yeah. So let that's me ask you this: so pretty unique. So, I mean, we talk about how cigars bring people together and bring people closer. Do you find that the fact that you and your husband both enjoy cigars and you smoke cigars together every night, do you feel that that like brings your relationship almost closer together because you guys can enjoy this and sit back, whether you're listening to music, having a conversation, but you both enjoy something very much that is not like a typical um, hobby, if you will. Okay. And it, does it bring you guys closer together? Oh, for sure. For sure. Especially because – cigars are such a big part of Jeff's life. I think like, even if 
you know, that wasn't the reason why he married me is because I was into cigars. I think um, it helped. It, it definitely does, helped. It definitely <laughs> helped. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, you know, I think it definitely provides a platform for us to be able to share in something together. I think it's important for people to have their own hobbies and their own interests and whatever they're into. But I think it's also really special to be able to share something like that and be able to enjoy it together. Now, so. do you, do your like friends who don't smoke cigars? Do they look at you like you guys smoke cigars together? Like, that's so weird. Like, that's so odd. Like my wife would never, my husband would never smoke a cigar. Like what are, the, what are some of the reactions you guys get from your friends? Cause I'm sure it's you know, different. Yeah. I mean, not a lot of my, not a lot of my close friends are into cigars. So I, I think they kind of have a hard time. I don't know. They, they support us. It's not like they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Nothing, you know, but, <laughs> um, they're not going to be like storing up a stash and getting in scars themselves probably. But, um, Cause I think I would yeah, say, I, I would say like, you're probably, if not the only person that I've heard that where, yeah, my, my husband and I both smoke almost just as many cigars together you know, than yeah. anybody else, which is pretty cool. Cause I've never actually had a conversation where, you know, they have a relationship like that. So it's very, very unique. Yeah. It's unique. It's fun. It's, I enjoy being able to share that common interest together. And, um, you know, I, I would say if, if any sort of flack that I get normally from not necessarily my friends, but just people in general is how um, bad cigars are for you. <sighs> Tell them to kick and, Rob, blah, blah. Tell them well, a couple. Know, we'll send you like four articles that we have, right? Of how like, they're they're not bad for you, right? Yeah, and I think people have a hard time kind of uh, associating like people who are really active and cigars together. Like I played soccer through college, and I'm very active. I still play, and I run, and you know, but. People have a hard time kind of associating that. They're like, how do you how do you do that and smoke cigars? I'm like, it doesn't affect it doesn't affect my lungs. You know? Yeah, like, exactly. You know? Exactly. I'm not sitting there like people like, I, like people, they don't I feel like it's they don't want to recognize or they don't want to accept it that look at all of the not all of them, but look at some of the best athletes in the world or best athletes ever they all smoke lebron james um michael jordan arnold yeah. schwarzenegger uh ed reed ray ed lewis, reed, ray lewis wayne Scott. gretzky john like all of these guys yeah. that are the top of the top of the top in their respective sport smoke cigars arnold schwarzenegger arguably the greatest body or physical can of all time smoke cigars oh, on a man. <laughs> okay but you know, boy over here. <laughs> so, I mean, he's German. I'm German. I guess. Yeah, that's okay. right. Oh, oh, oh. I love it, Hannah. I love Call it. Call me out, Hannah. Come down over there, Tiger. <laughs> so, but he smokes cigars. They all smoke cigars. And I go, how, okay, yeah. how is it that they smoke cigars and you're going to tell me that it's, ba- it's bad for you? I mean, right. look 100%. at the data. Look at the data, man. Well, that's it. No one wants to, no one actually wants to look. They just go up by the popular opinion and they don't want to do their own research and look for themselves. So they say, oh, this is right. bad. Cigars are bad. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, I think people kind of lump cigars and cigarettes and vape and all the other 100%. tobacco products into the same category, and which I think cheapens the beauty of cigars yes. so much. Yes, preach. We, we, we mention but, all the time. We've had uh, Joshua Haberski on, who is the head of government relations for the PCA, and he told us out of all the tobacco sales in the country. Cigars equivalent to what? One quarter of a percent? Yeah, it was less than half a percent. I think when we did the numbers a couple episodes ago, it was a quarter of a percent. It was like a quarter of a percent of all the revenue from tobacco is from cigars. And then we did a previous episode where we actually there was actually an article that came out a few months ago, I think in July actually, and they talked about the different uh, types of smokers. And if you're a cigarette smoker and a cigar smoker, you're obviously you're way more inclined to bad health risk. But if you're just a straight up cigar smoker there's very little inklings or increases in your health behavior, as long as you don't inhale, right. obviously. Right. But, um, yeah, key factor. <laughs> the key factor. So it's like, you know, people just got to, people don't realize that and don't want to think about it because they think it's so, oh, right. one cigar is a pack of cigarettes. Yeah, you inhale cigarettes. 
dumbass. Right. You don't inhale cigars. Though. Right. Which which sucks. I mean, especially uh, in the United States, at getting taxed so heavily in certain states like Idaho, unfortunately, is like pretty big tax. Is it really? I was going to ask you that. How? how yeah. What is the tax? tax there? Forty percent. All right. All right. Well, we got you beat there. But. Yeah. New York seventy five. Well, what's New York? Seventy five. That's rough. Yeah. But I mean, 40, but 45 is 45 is high, okay? Because we, we did an episode about it, and I don't remember the top, but compared to states where Pennsylvania, it's zero. In Texas, they, I think it's a penny a cigar because they have, it was something like a law where they had to put a thing on it. Yeah. So they said, all right, fuck yeah. you. Here's a penny a cigar. But compared yeah. to that, 45% is a lot. Yeah, I would think it was, I know it would be lo- lower. I'm, yeah, no, yeah, 40, 40%. I mean, it just makes it difficult to move forward in the industry in some ways. I mean, it, it makes it difficult to take our shop online, obviously. Like, nobody is going to want to, like, purchase cigars online from our humidor mm-hmm. if they have to pay 40% more, like, 40% tax on the cigars from our website as opposed to, like, a penny or none at all from... Mm-hmm. Yeah, ten dollar yeah, cigar so in Pennsylvania it, it is fourteen dollars yeah. in Idaho. Yeah. yeah, especially when you have you know uh, retailers that are you know based in Arizona, based in Pennsylvania, what where you can get zero percent. Like, all right, well, I'm just going to buy there and I'll wait an extra day. One hundred percent. Right. So it does make it difficult. But you did say that you are branching out to another location. So there's plenty of Idahoans that need uh, need cigars Idahoans yes. that's a good one I like that Idahoans yeah Floridians or I think it's Idahoans I Idahoans it's Idaho. I'm sorry yeah. I, I, it, it literally <laughs> came I'm out still, naturally I'm still so learning. I'm still learning what, are they, what is it called Idahoans Idahoans I like that like Samoans but Idahoans Idahoans I don't mind oh, Idahoans just came out naturally so I mean honestly when I think of Idaho that's, I that's think that's an Oregonian that would be like Oregonian Oregonian that's oh the Oregonian I okay so uh, let me ask you so you're wow. so you're from Oregon do you say Oregon or Oregon Oregon. Okay. Oregon. What do you say? Oregon or Oregon? Oregon. Oregon? I don't know. I don't Uh, really know. I haven't said enough. Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Portland, Oregon. Okay. And I've actually thought about it. Portland, Oregon. Yeah, Portland, Oregon. Oregon. Oregonian. But it's Oregonians. It's not Oregonians. Oregonians. It's not Oregonians. No, no, no. no. (laughs) Maybe that's the Guineas that are over there. Yeah, I don't know. The Oregonians. There's probably not a lot of them over there. Where did you you go to college? Where did you play soccer in college? Uh, My freshman season, I played at East... Through Washington University, and then I transferred to like a smaller college in Portland called Concordia. Oh, okay. They had a really solid soccer program. So, and I I had been recruited by them out of high school, and um, I ended up going to Eastern, and that was kind of a shit show. They were just not what I thought they were going to be. So, okay. were I, they not? I were they benching back. you? Were they benching you? No, they weren't benching me. The I would say the team environment was uh depressing yeah say less say <laughs> I less know, it i got wasn't you good. it was i i like i feel like it's kind of a buzzword now but i just it was kind of like a toxic environment it just especially i think some college coaches have uh a talent for being able to recruit not only the player but their personality to create team camaraderie and uh make sure that players are con- connecting off the field as well as on the field and uh some coaches are not good at that so i don't think that they really recruited with that in mind and it was just very and especially like the coaching style kind of coupled with that just uh yeah created an environment that was really um soul sucking yeah, you know? yeah it wasn't so, it wasn't a winning there's environment there's no rah 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 no, behind and, it and, right and it I think the soccer, I was expecting them to be like, I was expecting the soccer to be good, you know, because they're D1 and I was like, yay. But um, they weren't, you know, yeah. like the the club team that I played for, like before I went to college would have creamed them, you know, <laughs> so I was like. Yeah. Isn't, it, isn't it funny like that? How, how they say, yeah. I mean, as high schoolers. Because I, I played ball uh, basketball in college, and in high as in, in high school, you get your um, viewpoint of college sports gets tainted by this D one school, right? Right. Where I remember coaching a little some kids after I got out of college, and I said, "Don't get caught up in what yeah. division it is, 
because mm-hmm. there are some D3 schools that would crush some D1 schools. Okay? Absolutely. You know, especially in, in sports where, like, in, in, in basketball, the biggest thing between D1 and D2 and D3 is just the size of the positions, right? Like a, yeah. a, a center in D3 might be might be 6'8", maybe 6'9". A center in, in D1 might be 7'2". Right, but I feel like in soccer, you're really not going to have that much of a size difference. So it's more you're going to have teams that are D three that could crush D one. Like you said, your club could crush. So it's a perfect example. You said you went to a D one school and then found out that this really wasn't. You know, you probably said D one. I'm going, and then yeah, eh. (laughs) I was like, well, I just I kind of it became very clear to me that I just was not going to be able to like reach my full potential as a player there um and so i was like you know what i'm just gonna have to like put i I don't know i guess my pride aside and be like okay like i'm okay playing with a smaller program but like smaller i mean i love playing at concordia and we kicked ass man we went to nationals every year and my senior year we won the national title like we, we cleaned up you know and so that's what it's all about. I, and I think and I think what you were saying is so true, especially now, you know, the youth programs are becoming so much more robust and developed that really there's there's a lot less uh, difference between divisions nowadays just because, yeah, the youth programs are, are so much more advanced and people are, are training more and harder and earlier. And so, I don't know, I just feel like there is opportunity for good soccer or good basketball or good whatever sport you play Mm. like divisions aside you know and especially with social media now you can get recognized and you can get noticed a lot easier than say 25 30 years ago where if your professional scouts weren't really going to see anybody that was in d2 or d3 maybe d2 but d3 they probably weren't going to see them they were going to the d1 games and watching them but now with social media, I know I follow a couple of guys that were D three basketball players, and they're making a full time living. Either it's on professionally overseas, or they have their own YouTube channel, and they're making a full time living play. And with social media, the power is that you can get yourself noticed and recognized a lot easier than way back, you know, twenty five, thirty years ago. So the D one, D two, D three doesn't really matter yeah. anymore. And not even twenty, twenty five, thirty years ago. I mean, even when I was going into college, there was social media wasn't really a big thing you know i mean yeah there was like myspace and facebook but like there was no instagram there was no instagram imagine if we had a myspace cigar a cigar myspace can you imagine that with the with the music where you get to the page and the music plays in the background don't i can't even think about myspace MySpace you are now listening to the (laughs) burn down (laughs) remember that yeah you used to have different backgrounds and different yeah i would make i would make music pages to have the the newest song on my myspace so no one else had it yeah Yeah, i remember that (laughs) but good old days good old tom he was everybody's friend he was always tom from myspace right he's always friendly with everybody but oh my goodness so i think we're, we're we're heading to the to the close here we're getting at the end so Typically, at the end of our interview or an episode, we like to... Wait, we got one more question to ask. Uh-oh. This All is a question we ask everybody. Know. Okay, I know you were going to ask. Uh, let, you, ask you know the question, ask. Oh. You can't do that before you do this. No, this is a question no, no, we ask yeah, yeah. everybody. Okay, okay, well, almost everybody. We don't okay. know, but we try to ask. Got to ask. So, if there was one person, dead or alive, who you could smoke a cigar with... You, you, know, you like how I knew that? Uh, I, I know. I, I, I didn't even know. I just had a feeling that's what you want me to ask. I'm telling you, man. We're on the same page here. So, Hannah, if there was one person, dead or alive, you could smoke a cigar with, spend two hours of your time with, who would it be? Oh, that's a tough question. Um, I mean, and that's partly because, I mean, there's just... There's a lot of people, I'm sure. I mean, there's a lot of people and there's also not a lot of people. You know, <laughs> like, there's not a lot of people where it'd be like, yeah, that person I would definitely want to. Hang I out feel like with. my answer I changes think, every time. Yeah, well, well, let's yeah, just this. Right. As, aside, aside from your husband, because you know that's that's you know a given, right? You'd want to obvious answer. Okay, yeah. obvious answer. So brownie let's, points, brownie yeah, points. Yeah, let's put that aside. Aside yeah. from that, who who would it be and and why? Uh, and you can take your time. You can take your time with this. You can take your time. It doesn't. You don't have to be like on the spot. Answer immediately. We'll edit it out. Don't worry. Yeah, you know I. I've heard that uh, Bono likes cigars. 
Oh. I would I would smoke a cigar with Bono. I'd be like, let's go to Ireland and <laughs> kick it in Dublin and smoke stogie together. Oh, hell yeah. Hell I yeah. Hear, okay. I want to hear some stories. Drink a pint. Some- Drink a pint and a stogie in Dublin. Yeah. Some shitty ass yeah. pub on the corner. Yeah. The I never I never knew that. I, I didn't know Bono was into cigars. That's a first for me. Bono. That's right. a, okay. Good answer. Great. Bono. Great. If, if it wasn't Bono, then maybe I would. I would not mind smoking a cigar with like Sylvester Stallone or Michael Jordan. I mean, who wouldn't want to smoke a cigar yeah. with Michael Jordan? Great. Right an- Those are great answers. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, uh, I mean, Michael Jordan's a pretty popular one. Sylvester Stallone, I would definitely want to smoke with one. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's the he's the man. I think I think Jack Nicholson would be a fun person to smoke a cigar oh, with too. He would probably we could just have get them all in the room. All in the. All that would be group. a table. There you go. So you have a round table, five seats at the table. Mm-hmm. You, Bono, Sylvester Stallone, Michael Jordan, and Jack Nicholson. Wow. There's a table for you. That's a personality that's a, that's a crew right there. Oh, wow. Motley crew. Wow. I like that. Yeah, we had one time um, Ben, who's a sister in Smoke On, and um, she said Tupac. And I was like, wow. I said, if you could That's smoke- what my husband said. Yeah? That, that, I think that's who he's like. Because I, I asked my husband that one time, and he was like, uh, "Either Babe Ruth or Tupac." The Babe, like, the Babe would be a good one too. I got yeah. it. So she's yeah, she said Tupac, and I was like, "Wow!" I was like, "She's like, yeah, I can be like picturing like being like in a low rider smoking a Lancero," and I'm like, "She's like giving me like this really vivid image of how he would be," and I'm like, "Wow, all right." It was it was to the point where we we had, I said. I feel like this happened. Like, did this happen? Because it was so vivid. Like, she had really thought about it. Mm -hmm. So that's a great table, though. Bono, Sylvester, Bono, Sly, MJ, Jack, and Jack. And Hannah. Wow. So that's that's the way to end it. All right. Now you can do what you want to do. So now, as I was saying before, (laughs) at the end of every episode with our guests, we like to give them the red carpet with talk about... Plug everything. Plug your social media, what you got going on, anything you want people to know about the floor, the red carpet is all yours, Hannah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, check out Rojo Corojo. I got some really fun projects on the horizon. Um, can't share too much about them because, you know, it's what a surprise is. Legality, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I got some really fun things in the works and still trying to I don't know, just on the grind, on the still trying to build my brand, and, and I'm not really sure. I think when I, especially when I started Rojo Corojo, it was like this was going to be a fun side hustle, a fun grind to be able to pour some creative energy and passion into. But I wasn't really sure where exactly I wanted it to take me. I know for sure I wanted to like get my foot in the door a little bit deeper. <laughs> um, and so and fun things are happening. So I'm excited to be able to share with everybody. Well, you're doing a great job and keep up all the good work. We uh, we respect the grind, the hustle that you put into it. So don't stop. Thank you. And uh, we're looking forward to the next steps with Hannah. So we appreciate you coming on and taking the time to hang out with the Burndown. Yeah. Thank you for having me. So we'll send you off with, uh, with, our, with our signature send off. Cheers. Chin chin and salute. Salute. Thanks, Hannah.